I designed and built these 3x3 speed cubes from scratch using nothing but 3D printing and off the shelf parts. And guess what? They even turn pretty decent too. Now I've made a lot of 3D printed puzzles before, including some of my own designs and those created by others. But what all of these puzzles have in common is they were made on 3D printers that are getting upwards of a decade old, which might as well be ancient history in the world of 3D printing. And that's why when I finally bought my own 3D printer earlier this year, a Bamboo Lab P1S, hashtag not sponsored, I was blown away by the print quality even right out of the box with no setup. So that got me to thinking, rather than just printing out extensions that you glue on to an existing twisty puzzle, like I've done with a lot of my past 3D printed mods, why not just print the entire puzzle from scratch? You could easily print with enough detail to pull it off. So now the tricky part would be, how do you design a Rubik's Cube mechanism from scratch? I had tried it a few times over the years, but never had much success. There's just so many intricate curves and interlocking parts, it seems just so hard to get right. But with my new 3D printer in hand, I thought back to watching Matt Bonner's amazing documentary on designing and 3D printing the record-breaking 34x34, and about a comment that he had made that designing Rubik's Cube mechanisms was actually a lot simpler than you'd think. Sure enough, he had some old tutorials on his channel, so I watched through them, and my mind was blown at just how simple it is to design any Rubik's Cube you want. I'm not going to get into the intricacies of the 3D modeling, but here's the really mind-blowing thing. Any 3x3 mechanism can be described by drawing exactly one line. Let me prove it to you. So imagine taking a cross section of this Rubik's Cube, chopping it in half straight down the middle, and thinking about what you would see on the inside. In particular, think about the line that separates this centerpiece from this edge piece. In fact, let's draw it out right now. So this is the cross section of our Rubik's Cube. So this is the center, and this is the edge and here is the line that will separate the two. And there we go, we're finished. That is all you need to know to design this Rubik's brand. It might make it a little bit more obvious if we repeat that same line on the opposite side, and then maybe also repeat it on all the other axes just to make it a little bit more obvious, but hopefully you can tell this is just the same line repeated over and over again. So hopefully this is starting to look more like the inside of a Rubik's Cube, so that's kind of like your core. Each one of these is a centerpiece, it's kind of this T-shape as you can see right there, matches that. And then over here, this looks just like an edge piece, so when you hold it from this angle, as you can see that's the exact same shape. But here's the really mind-blowing thing. Even if you start turning the Rubik's Cube, say halfway like this, the cross section still looks the same if you chop it down this axis. Except now, instead of a centerpiece down the middle, we have an edge piece in this orientation. And can you see how that edge piece kind of looks like the center that we had before? It's the same thing with this part of the cross section. This shape doesn't just represent an edge, but it can also represent this corner piece when it's rotated 45 degrees like this. You can see how that kind of bears the same resemblance. So long story short, Every piece of a Rubik's Cube is really just defined by this one cross section, which again, is defined by that one line that we drew. Now, this is basically what the line looks like for a Rubik's brand, but you can shift it around a little bit, add some more angles, maybe throw some curves in there, and basically design any 3x3 mechanism that you want, even the craziest speed cube. Now, when I use this method to design my first 3x3 from scratch, this is the line that I used. As you can see, it's a little bit more complicated, but still pretty straightforward. And after a few simple steps, I was able to transform that single line into this these fully formed Rubik's Cube pieces, which look amazingly professional. Now there's a few more steps you have to take before the pieces are ready to be printed out. For example, you have to make some of the surfaces a little bit shorter, make a little bit of a gap so that there's enough tolerance for them to slide past each other on the finished cube. You have to round off all the sharp edges to make sure that the pieces don't constantly get caught in each other, basically like adding corner cutting. And you have to hollow out the centerpiece and put a hole down the middle so that you have somewhere to put the screw and spring to actually hold all six center pieces together and maybe add a center cap on too. So with all those little modifications, the pieces look something like this. So I went ahead and loaded that onto the 3D printer and printed out my first three by three Rubik's cube. I cleaned up all my friends freshly printed parts, and then realized, wait a minute, I'm still missing a few things. Namely, screws, springs, and a core. If I want to truly build my own speed cube from scratch, it would feel like cheating to just take these from an existing Rubik's Cube. The core was simple enough to replace. I just designed a little ball with six evenly spaced holes that I could easily screw six screws into, so no problem. Springs were a little bit trickier, but I eventually managed to find some online that were about the right size and shape to match what you'd normally find in a Rubik's Cube. But then the screws! Oh my gosh, trying to find something remotely similar to a Rubik's Cube screw has totally ruined my life. If you don't know, 
the screws that you find in a Rubik's Cube are pretty darn specialized. It starts with a very short little flat section, which just helps you get the screw started like this. Then you have a very short section of thread that goes into the core. And then the rest of the screw is completely blank so that the centerpiece can slide back and forth freely. And then finally, the head of the screw is really, really thin. So you have as much vertical clearance as possible, but it's also pretty wide to hold back the spring or sometimes even magnets that you have sliding inside of there. I tried so hard trying to figure out how to just buy screws like this. Eventually I even went and talked to a cube manufacturer on Alibaba and just pleaded to buy a hundred hardware sets for a three by three Rubik's cube. And their answer was basically, what are you talking about? We don't sell those. So if any of you guys out there know where I can get my hands on a bunch of Rubik's cube screws, let me know. But in the meantime, I just found the closest thing that I could, which isn't that ideal. As you can see, it's a lot different from the Rubik's cube screw in a lot of ways, but it's the closest I could find. So with all of the parts in hand, I went and finally assembled this Rubik's cube that I had built completely from scratch. Again, using nothing but 3D printed parts and some basic hardware that I bought off the shelf, this Rubik's Cube is completely custom. Of course, it looks just like a normal Rubik's Cube. I haven't bothered to put stickers on it, but let's see how it turns. And the consensus is okay, but not great. It's quite smooth and reasonably fast, but it also just feels very basic and blocky. The corner cutting is basically non-existent. So if you try and do an algorithm, you basically just lock up immediately. And also it pops like crazy. And so I pretty much threw this cube away and immediately got started working on a version two. But real quick, another really cool feature that my new 3D printer has is the ability to print in multiple different colors of filament at the same time. I have mine set up to print in all six colors of Rubik's cube plus black. This will become very important important later in the video, but another one of my favorite things that I've made with this printer are these cool little flat keychains and coasters that look like Rubik's cubes. You can actually buy one for yourself right now at z3cubing.com for just six or $12 respectively. There's also a version that looks like the Z3 cubing logo, which conveniently happens to have the same seven colors. Or for just a little bit more, you can choose your own favorite Rubik's cube pattern or just any scramble that you want and get that custom printed onto a keychain or a coaster instead. You can get free shipping on any of these within the US, and there's also high quality vinyl stickers and t-shirts all at z3cubing.com. Okay, now back to the version two. I started completely from scratch, and this time, when I was drawing that initial cross-sectional line, I made it quite a lot more complicated to try and mimic the design of a more modern speed cube. And you can see on the physical pieces just how big of a difference that made compared to what we had before. So now you can see these corner stalks are a lot longer and skinnier than on the original, and that allows some more room for this sort of wing-like feature across the edge piece, which you can also see on the center pieces here. Honestly, every speed cube nowadays looks like this, so I decided to kind of just copy it. And another important important feature as a result of the new line that I drew is this little wing type piece on the bottom of the edge piece, which is called a torpedo. It actually sits underneath the base of the corner piece and basically it prevents popping because as the corner piece tries to get pulled out in this direction, it basically stops it underneath that corner. As you can see, I also added these little holes right between the edges and corners that you can stick magnets into in order to magnetize the puzzle and have them stick together. And just for fun, I threw an extra magnet hole on the bottom of the corner piece along with eight magnet holes in the core. That way we can also have core magnets where the corners attract directly to the core. And the final change I made was to the corners. It's pretty subtle, but very important. As you can see, it's nice and squared off on the top here, but very nice and round underneath. If you compare this to the old version, you can see that the corners are just rounded off the entire way. This is how Rubik's cubes used to be designed, but the problem is as those corners kept getting more and more rounded off to improve corner cutting, you started getting a lot of corner twists because those really wide rounded corners would make it really easy for them to just slide around in place. And that's why on my new version of this cube, the corners are nice and squared off, which makes it a lot harder to accidentally corner twist. But here's the important part. They're only squared off like that at the very top. Underneath that, they're actually even more rounded than they were before which means that when you're corner cutting and the cube's a little bit offset like this, you still have that nice round portion to slide against your centerpiece and allow for really good corner cutting. So it's a subtle design feature, but you find it in nearly every three x three speed cube nowadays because it gives you the best of both worlds between lack of corner twisting, but also good corner cutting. But without further ado, here is our fully assembled version two cube. As you can see, all the magnets are installed. So between the corners and edges and also between the corners and the core. So with all of these huge improvements, this cube ought to turn amazing, right? And honestly, it's all right. It's definitely better than the first version. It feels a lot more fluid and stable and the corner cutting is a lot better too. To be honest though, I was still a little bit underwhelmed. For example, the backwards corner cutting is still pretty awful. The magnets are obnoxiously strong. I think I just placed them way too close together. Oh, and the worst part of it all 
These center caps just fall off constantly. So I decided to take another shot at creating an amazing custom 3x3 by solving all these little problems while getting even more ambitious. So basically, I started with the same design, but I rounded off the edges, centers, and corners as much as I could to try and improve the corner cutting. I recessed the magnets a little bit so they wouldn't be quite as strong. I also noticed that the torpedoes weren't holding in the edges quite as well as I thought, so I went ahead and expanded those out both directions a little bit. And most importantly, I completely redesigned the center caps so that they would fit on really snugly and never come off. But you may have noticed that I haven't bothered stickering either of the cubes that I've made so far, which is completely out of laziness, but also, I literally just bought a robot that can print in all the different colors of Rubik's Cube, so frankly, why should I have to sticker it? That's right, instead of just printing these as solid pieces that would always have to be completely black, I decided to create a new design where I could actually have them in multiple pieces so that each half of the edge and each third of the corner could be different colors. So just like you'll find on a lot of stickerless cubes out in the wild, these edges are now two parts that can fit together like this with the magnets nicely embedded inside, and the corners are now actually four parts, so you have a stem, plus three colored pieces on the outside, again with their magnets inside so that they can all fit nicely together like that. So after getting all the kinks worked out with this design, I finally went ahead and printed all the parts that I needed. So all six colors, all the edges, all the corners, all the centers, in addition to one set of black pieces for the core, and then I started the final assembly. It was a lot more work than assembling the other two cubes, a lot of removing support material, cutting off little bits of extra plastic to make everything fit just right, and after many, many hours of design, iteration, printing, and assembly, I finally had myself a fully custom stickerless 3x3 speed cube. Oh yeah, and I snuck in one more cool feature along the way, maglev. So now instead of that spring we had in there earlier, we now have two of these little ring magnets repelling against each other, which gives you that feeling of springiness. Here's my brand new redesigned center cap, which as you can see, fits on a lot more snugly than before. And the resulting assembled cube turns actually pretty fantastic. Certainly the best of the three so far, even if it's not quite perfect. I think I solved all the problems with the previous cube. The biggest issue with this one in particular is actually a new one that I caused by making it stickerless. Basically, the pieces don't fit together perfectly. You can see there's a tiny little gap between the different colors, which basically makes the pieces a little bit wider than they're supposed to be. And that kind of just makes the whole cube a little bit wonky and crooked. There's little gaps appearing in all different places that you wouldn't expect. That is something I could solve by building better tolerances into the stickerless pieces. But honestly, that just sounds like too much work to do it all over again. And instead, I want to make something even better. I wanted to take this honestly really good design that I had ended up with after many, many iterations, take all all the lessons that I had learned and turn it into one really good custom 3x3 speed cube. So rather than use the multi-part stickerless design again, which as we saw was a little bit problematic, I decided to fall back on a feature of my 3D printer that we talked about a little bit earlier. It can print in multiple colors of filament at the same time. And that doesn't just have to be on a flat coaster like this, it can be a fully three-dimensional part like this here corner piece. That's right, this is one single 3D printed part using black filament for the lower part, and then obviously white, red, and green filament for the upper stickers. But they're not actually stickers. They're not even colored tiles. It's literally just part of the plastic that makes up the piece, which happens to be in a different color. Cool, right? Now the only problem with printing in multicolor with really tall pieces like this is it is really wasteful when it comes to filament. If you imagine it printing in this orientation, going up one layer at a time, every single layer, the printer has to switch from black filament to green filament to red filament. It has to go up a layer, again, switch black, green, red. Every single layer, it has to do three filament switches and there's like 60 something layers. And every single time you switch colors, it has to extrude a little bit of waste filament out the back just to get rid of the old color and get the new color ready. So by the time you're switching colors hundreds of times over and over again, you end up with a massive amount of filament just completely wasted. So needless to say, it's not a very economical or efficient way to print a Rubik's Cube, but it is a very cool way to print a Rubik's Cube. So I went ahead and did it just this one time. I colored all the pieces in the software exactly how they needed to be, saw the time estimate of 15 hours, and after a lot of waiting, the print was finally finished. It was so surreal seeing this fully formed Rubik's Cube fully colored, just sitting there on the print bed, ready to be assembled after a click of a button. It was actually probably the easiest assembly process of them all. Just pop off the support material, throw in some magnets, and screw it all together. And now, the result of over four months of learning how to design and print twisty puzzles, dozens if not hundreds of hours in my 3D modeling software, just refining the design over and over again, and a whole lot of 3D printer filament used along the way, 
we now have version four, which just might be the greatest three by three speed cube I will ever make. It's got piece magnets. It's got core magnets. It's got maglev. It's got all the little anti-pop, anti-corner twist, good corner cutting features that you'd expect in a modern speed cube. It's got it all. And it is certainly the first Rubik's cube that I've heard of that was printed from scratch in full color. So how does it turn? Well, pretty darn well, if I do say so myself. Obviously, it's not gonna match the quality of a mass-produced speed cube from Moyu or something, but it definitely does fix that piece separation issue from the stickerless version, and it just feels really good. It has one of the most satisfying sounds of any speed cube I've tried. I have it pretty darn loose, which makes it quite fluid and fast, and I am very surprised at just how little these pieces want to pop out. Obviously, it's no Waylong V11 or anything, but still, I would unironically use this in a cubing competition just for fun, and maybe I will next time. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this very ambitious video it has been a very long time coming but the great thing is the skills i've learned along the way in puzzle modeling and 3d printing will definitely transfer over to a lot of future videos i already have quite a few other projects like this in mind so if you enjoy 3d printed puzzles definitely stay on the lookout be sure to let me know down in the comments what kind of other puzzles like this you want me to make in the future but that's pretty much it for this one and i'll see you guys next time